seven months before my husband's fatal accident, our local church in California filmed a video of Warren telling his story where his parents decided to stop praying for his protection regarding the consequences of his actions and his choices. At that time, he was living only for work and not for family and certainly not for Jesus. But you'll see how that changes and you'll see hope and a message that is definitely for my sons, but also for you. So this is the Everyday Princess with Leanne and Warren. I like saying that. I hope the story blesses you. We are in the Holy Week, Easter week, and this is about Jesus. And in John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Please, if you haven't seen my first video describing this story, this wonderful love story, the unending love story, please go back and look at it. Be sure that you're one of the children of the King. He ends with a verse from Jeremiah 29 11. And it's about hope and a future. And in this time with a pandemic, I think we need to be reminded that Jesus is our hope and Jesus has a good future in store for those who belong to him. And I hope you're one of them, that you've accepted this free gift of salvation and this way to God that can only be through Jesus. The Lord bless you. And I pray that the truth in this video and that his story blesses you too. So in the spring of 1979, uh, my wife Cynthia and I uh, moved to Thousand Oaks. She was pregnant with uh, Christopher at that time. He was born in December of 1979. My whole life at that, at that point revolved around my job. I was driven back and forth to work so I could work in the car because I left at, you know, 5 in the morning and came home at 8, 9, 10, 11 at night. We had a, maybe a 3,000 square foot house. We bought a five, 6,000 square foot house, you know, the brass and, and oak kind of place. And we had a condo at Channel Islands Harbor and uh, our life was going great. I thought we were right on top of everything. New Year's Eve, uh, 1980, 1981, my parents made a New Year's resolution and they decided that they would stop praying for my protection because they felt that they were sort of keeping me from experiencing some of the consequences of some of my lifestyle decisions. I was so committed to work, we weren't going to church. Um, my son, I mean, he was still very young at the time, but he barely saw me. So they made a decision that their prayers wouldn't stand in the way of God working in my life. After they made that prayer, some startling things began happening. A week after, uh, Cynthia came to me and said, um, you don't love me anymore, I'm gonna move into our condo at the beach. And our son Christopher was diagnosed with the worst case of spinal meningitis in the history of Westlake Hospital and was given a 10% chance to live. And if he did live, he'd be mentally handicapped or blind or deaf or something. And about a week or two after the episode with, with Christopher, I was fired from my job. Um, I was the fourth or fifth uh, level uh, rated executive uh, in, in my company and I got fired from my job. There was just a, a major shock to my identity and what I thought my, my purpose in life was. Hitting bottom was like a ka-chunk, and then ka-chunk, and then ka-chunk, and then ka-chunk. It was not one bottom, but it was the lowest that I could possibly get in so many areas of life. A man that I'd never met before is knocking at, at my door. And I open the door and he says, would you like to come to Calvary Community Church? And I didn't know what to make of that, but uh, God was leading. 
And so I, I went to Calvary that next Sunday, and God started working on my heart. At that point in my life, I couldn't remember ever crying. I'm sure I did as a small child, but I, it was one thing we didn't do as men. But that first week in, in Calvary, the tears started flowing uh, down my face. And I was so embarrassed, I just ran out of the church. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't want anybody to see the tear tracks on my face. Um, but I knew God was, it was at work. And this continued for a total of six weeks. At the end of every message, I was just reduced to weeping. Out of the blue, um, Cynthia called and said, I believe God is calling us to put our relationship back together. So I had gone from a at least in the natural, a very hopeless state of this is broken beyond repair to miraculously seeing it brought back to together. God has numbered our days. We don't know what that number is. Um, but we need to live wisely every single day. There's no such thing as a wasted day, a wasted moment. God saw fit to use me, and I was the worst of sinners. Yet God said, return to me, because I have plans for you. Not plans for your destruction, not plans for evil, but plans for good, beyond anything you could hope or imagine.